welcome. This is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element 12, coastal landforms. Eyes to the front, I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Headlands, as we know, stick out into the sea and take the majority of the sea's erosional power, creating several features we're gonna look at today. However, knowledge of some of the other erosional processes will help with this lesson. So if you need to, have a look back at lessons 1.4, 1.8 and 1.11 for a recap. So we're going to start off by looking at the headland. There are five features we're going to look at today. And it all starts with a crack. Now a crack itself is not a feature, it's a part of the geology of the headland. So we have things called bedding planes and joints. Bedding planes are the lateral gaps between different layers of sedimentary rock. So sedimentary rock is a buildup of different types of material, usually plants and animal life under, that's been compressed by the sea and structured into different layers. So it's the gaps between these two, these different layers. While as joints are the vertical gaps between these different layers. So it's at cracks where we start to see a weakness occurring in the headland. Hydraulic action will force air in and compress it. And that compressed air will force the cracks, the joints to be become bigger and create larger cracks. As the cracks get bigger, they can fit sand and silt in, and so abrasion will start to wear away on the inside of the crack as well, forcing it out to be wider. And the process of hydraulic action and abrasion will eventually start to take chunks of rock away from the crack and widening the entrance. So what you end up having is a really wide entrance that also starts to go further deeper into the headland. And this is called a cave. So it doesn't go all the way through into the other side of the headland, it just goes in. However, erosion will also be working on both sides of that headland. So the side we can see, waves are going to come down and collide at the side, but it will also be happening at the other side. So when two caves meet and go all the way through, we end up with this. So this is an arch. So an arch has a bit at the top, which is called a bridge. So the bridge can be quite wide or quite deep, like this one is, or it can be quite narrow. So the arch comes all the way nearly up to the top. But the arch itself, is not going to be affected by the erosion caused by the sea. Instead, it's going to be more affected by weathering. So we're going to have freeze fall weathering, where we have water getting into the cracks, freezing overnight, and that water expands as it freezes, making the cracks bigger. We're going to have biological weathering, where the roots, such as the grass here, or could be the trees and plants, are going to get into the cracks, so the joints and the bedding planes, and make those wider. And this erosion, this weathering, is going to weaken the structure of the cliff at the top. We'll also have some chemical weathering from uh, either the seawater or from rain that's going to slowly dissolve this as well. So that's going to weaken the structure of this bridge until it collapses. So this is an example of what's happened here. This bit here that sticks out on its own would have once been joined to the headland here by its own arch, which has eventually collapsed. So the bit that's left remaining is called the stack. And the stack is a sol uh, solitary column of rock that stands out on its own. It's the first bit of uh, headland that's going to be hit by the sea's power, so it's going to take the brunt of that energy, which means that stacks tend to erode quicker than the rest of the headland. And again, it's going to be affected by hydraulic action and abrasion and the majority of the other weathering as well. And over time, that's going to wear away until it's just sticking up above the waterline, and that's called a stump. And that's the end point of our landform processes until it goes underneath the sea, at which point the erosion is predominantly the solution and abrasion. So here's some actual examples. So we can see here an example of a crack. So that's a joint that's been widened. This is quite a pronounced one. It's quite a big one, but cracks can be a lot smaller. You can see some examples here as well. And there'll be even some smaller ones that air can still get pushed into to start off the process. We've got several caves here, which have then led on to the actual arch you can see here. And you can see that the bridge of this arch is actually quite narrow. And you can see one of the, the actual joints up there is probably where it's going to fail on eventually and collapse in, leaving this bit as a stack. So here's a stack as it stands on its own. And then we also have the stump. So you can see it's almost about to go underneath the water line as it remains. Well, that brings our lesson to an end. We'll continue at your own pace by completing the now try it tasks for homework. Class dismissed.